Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Wednesday morning to you all. Hope everyone is doing well out there this morning and having a fantastic start to your Wednesday. A great week out there so far, and I hope you all are feeling the love today on this wonderful Valentine's Day. We're going to talk about what's going to happen weather-wise for your Wednesday. We'll break down a couple things. The big topic is going to be a system entering the West Coast, going to bring lower elevation rain higher elevation snow. And then there's a little piece, I would say little, you know, it's kind of a compact system from the northern stream that's flying across South Dakota right now as we speak. And uh, this will continue to move in general eat from west to east, uh, bring a stripe of accumulating snow into the upper Midwest, eventually the Great Lakes region, and then eventually to the northeast. Some of those areas that kind of got gypped with the snow uh, could get some accumulating snow off this as we get into really tomorrow into our Friday morning. So we'll speak on that. And then after we're done speaking on today into tomorrow, there is a system that's sneaking up on us very quickly uh, for Friday here in the next uh, 48 hours. It's going to be kind of like this system you see on the screen, that big blue blob on your screen in South Dakota. It's going to be a little bit further south, though, as cold air kind of comes in, pushes the energy further south, going to take a more southern route. And that could bring a stripe of accumulating snow also to areas of the central U.S. and to maybe sections of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and dare I say the Mid-Atlantic. D.C. going to have a chance to get some accumulating snow again. We need to see how far south or north this is going to trend, but we'll speak on that for the second half of the video. So, you know, even though, you know, there's a lot of areas that have not seen any kind of winter weather like us here in the southeast and the southern sections of the country you know there's other areas a little bit further north of us that you know has opportunities for some winter weather some snow that will continue over the next several days so we're going to speak on it break it down for you folks and get you guys covered if you guys have not subscribed certainly consider doing that like the video if you like it and if anybody has anything that i can pray about or pray over as always please put those in the comments below let's get rocking and rolling so you see the snow, I've already kind of mentioned it, flying across, and, and it's pretty much only in South Dakota right now. And where it is snowing, it's snowing pretty good. It's a very, it's like a baby system out there. This is part of the northern stream. There's nothing really connecting to it from the southern stream. It's almost like an aggressive clipper. And uh, clippers can have some pretty heavy snowfall with it, or sometimes rain. But clippers can have some almost like snow squall kind of conditions. And that is what we are seeing in South Dakota. In fact, it's going to snow hard enough for such a short amount of time that, you know, we actually have winter storm warnings up for areas of South Dakota and I believe Minnesota. So we're going to speak on that. It'll be a heavy topic in today's version of the video. We're also going to speak on Canada too. Um, Nova Scotia got hit hard again. And, um, you know, you're getting hit, hit, you're getting hit hard right now in, in western sections of Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. So we will speak on that too. I'll have a timestamp up for that. You guys continue just to get hit really really hard with a lot of snow. So winter has been relentless up there, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, we'll speak on this system entering the West Coast, and then we'll talk about everybody, just like we always do. Storm Prediction Center, nothing going on. No thunderstorms forecast, so no real point in staying on this very long. Excessive rainfall outlook, we will watch a very small risk of flooding here in northern Cal the Northern California coastline and a very small section of the southwestern Oregon coastline. But outside of that, not expecting any kind of flooding risk today. Watches, warnings, and advisories. Check it out. We got some winter storm warnings up. Winter's finally trying to make a comeback here in the northern terrain of the country. And, uh, you know, we got some winter storm warnings up for like the, the Sioux Falls, Sioux Cities kind of region. Now, I'm not saying they have winter storm warnings up, but kind of in that regional forecast area. We have here in the purple winter weather advisories, which do include Minneapolis all the way to Green Bay. I'm, no, I don't think they're quite into Milwaukee right now, but I expect to see some winter weather advisories extended into lower Michigan here in the next probably 6 to 12 hours, and then eventually they will get extended into the northeast here in the next uh, half a day or a day as this same system is going to affect you guys too. We got some snow that's going to be flying around pretty good out here in the Rockies, the Cascades, and these places were several inches to up to over a foot is expected. So some snowy times out here. The southern sections of the lower 48, it's pretty quiet. Southeast, we'll start off this morning. Not going to stay on this very long because there's not a whole lot going on. And, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a chilly start for some people. For some, just, just you know, mild to chilly. Not, not, not too bad out there. We get into this morning, not really anything going on this afternoon, this evening, overnight hours, high pressure just dominating nothing really going on at all just kind of a a typical kind of february type day across the southeast not really warm not really cold 
either. So enjoy your na- nice uh, Wednesday that you got out here in store for you. The Northeast it will be pretty quiet too. Some snow flurries, snow showers are possible. This maybe not being reflected off the HRRR model here. In fact, we can get some uh, some light snow into northern Maine today. Might add some accumulations out here. And we get into this evening, not much going on. But as we get into tomorrow morning, you can see some heavy snow starting to enter lower Michigan. And uh, this will continue as we get deeper into our Thursday. We'll speak on that. We'll have another segment segment for this here in a second. So we're not going to extend this into Thursday for the Northeast yet. But you can see all this snow about to head into Ontario. Dump a pretty good amount of snow in certain areas depending on where you are. So my folks up in Canada, listen, this this storm, I believe, is overachieved. And we take a look at some of the radar and I always forget that we can, on radar scope, we can look at the radar out of areas of uh, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. But this is the radar, uh, radar out of Nova Scotia, showing Sydney out on Cape Breton Island. Uh, the axis of heaviest, heaviest snow is starting to pull out now, but you guys got hit hard. You guys will have to let me know how much snow y'all saw, Halifax, uh, Yarmouth. Um, all these areas. Let me know how much snow you saw out here. I try to show you guys as much love as possible. Um, and you guys are so freaking nice. Y'all are so kind out here. I've had, I've never had one negative comment from anybody in Canada before. I really appreciate how polite you guys always are. And that's what kind of drives me to keep trying to cover y'all because y'all are so polite. So, um, you know, snowing pretty good out here. It looks like the meat of this system is starting to pull away. But if we kind of switch and look at some radar out of Newfoundland, which I definitely didn't realize we had radar out of Newfoundland. So this really surprised me here. But let's kind of take a wider look at this. You guys are getting hit hard. Really, really hard out here in uh, southeastern portions of Newfoundland. You guys are just getting blasted with heavy, heavy snow. It's just continuing St. John's. You guys are getting hit hard. An all-out snowstorm ongoing. I don't know how you guys get your weather alerts. I don't know how the the Canada weather, like, you know, we have the National Weather Service here and uh the united states i don't know how it works up here um i wish i could take time um to, to figure that out i just don't have a whole lot of time but you guys are getting hit pretty hard with a, with a pretty hefty winter storm right now so we take a look at the euro and we'll start off this morning and uh it's matching up pretty well with what's going on and you know it looks like this will kind of you know dwindle away a little bit by this evening but you're still getting snow getting thrown back even into prince edward island even a little bit of snow into um, New Brunswick snow into Cape Breton Island continues to fall this evening. But as we get into this evening, this afternoon, this evening, you guys in Newfoundland, most of Newfoundland is going to be getting hit hard. The further south and southeast you work, the heavier the snow is, probably the, the, the higher the accumulations is going to be. But you get even into Thursday morning, guys, you're still getting rounds of light to moderate snow, most likely for Nova Scotia and surrounding areas. And snow is continuing to pile up for Newfoundland and uh, we continue and uh, the low pressure can kind of gets blocked out in the North Atlantic and it looks like y'all just continue to just get rounds of snow even into the Friday and then we're gonna have to watch another system you see that system to the south down here we'll have to watch that too but snowfall expected between now and Friday morning an additional foot is possible now you know I, this isn't from the same system it kind of is but kind of isn't but this is between now and Friday morning. So the next 48 hours, you guys could just steadily add up. You know, I know I think 30 centimeters is equivalent to one foot of snow. So another half a foot to a foot of snow, 15 to 30 centimeters of snow as possible in Cape Breton Island, depending on your location. You know, I would say five to 10 centimeters of snow in Cape Breton. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Prince Edward Island and a little bit of snow as possible even on the uh, the western sections of Nova Scotia but you guys will continue to get crushed out here in Newfoundland with a, a foot foot and a half two feet of snow 30 to 60 centimeters of snow between just now and Friday morning you guys will continue to get hit hard not a lot in New Brunswick but man this this storm is, is certainly just I mean I don't even know if you guys had a chance to dig out from the last one about a week and a half ago or whenever it was but um, hope that help. I hope that update helps you guys. We'll continue to keep you guys in the loop with all these other systems that's coming up for the United States. So eventually, try to affect Atlantic Canada, the South Central U.S. Um, pretty quiet today. Uh, chill weather. Some showers could uh, start to enter the coastline of Texas, depending on your location. Uh, could drift up into the Houston area. Some shower activity, light sprinkle activity, probably is possible in this region thursday but we get into thursday morning guys and there is pretty quiet weather in the south central u.s not a whole lot to speak on all right so the north central you know 70 75 percent of this area is quiet but whoever is seeing action 
could see a good bit of snow, a quick punch of snow for sure. And, you know, for, for most of these areas, you know, you wouldn't consider five to eight inches of snow a lot, but I think it's just the fact that it's going to fall pretty fast in a pretty short amount of time is what I think could catch some people off guard. So what we'll watch for is this system right here, and it's um, HRRR model has this verifying pretty well. This snow will start to con continue to move kind of north of the, uh, what is it, Sioux Falls, Sioux Cities region, just north of that area. This stripe of snow will continue through. Um, eastern sections of South Dakota. A little bit of snow is possible in the extreme southeastern portions of North Dakota. But this will start to move into the Minneapolis area. I think Minneapolis will be just north of the heaviest snow, but this could, you know, tweak north or south a little bit. We start to get into this evening. Um, I think mainly rain uh, is likely for this system with Iowa, but the northern counties of Iowa could get some snow. But, you know, you got to this system is going to strengthen as we go through in time at this point kind of in the middle of the night tonight thousand and nine middle bar low based off the h triple r model but uh this is going to strengthen the precipitation will get heavier and this system can broaden a little bit just kind of widen out and we're going to get some light to moderate snow even up here in the up of michigan northern wisconsin still snowing back here you guys have not hardly got any snow in minneapolis this year so you'll Kind of add a few inches to, to that very weak tally that you got adding up here this winter. Uh, but this will continue, folks, and we'll get some light to moderate snow. Could be heavy at times in the UP of Michigan after midnight tonight. Um, and uh, we got to watch areas like Milwaukee. Milwaukee is kind of a, a big question mark with this. You're right in here. You're very close uh, to getting just a cold rain or very heavy, wet snow with this. But once you get into Green Bay, I think this snow will move in around midnight. Most of Wisconsin will see snow except the far southern counties of Wisconsin. I think places like Janesville will struggle, and I think this will just be mainly rain for Chicago. And then we take it all the way out to Thursday morning. We'll go on and keep this going here. And this is when the snow could be pretty heavy. I could see snow for the snowfall forecast in Michigan, lower Michigan, really increasing here in the next 6 to 12 hours. But there's some very heavy snow. It's not going to be a long duration event, but you're, you might get woken up to a pretty a pretty big surprise here in lower Michigan as there will be some heavy snow flying around. The southern counties will probably get mainly rain, but once you get into central to northern lower Michigan, up here to the UP, um, some pretty heavy snow could fall. Detroit, ah, you know, I don't think you're going to get much from this. You get a few hours north of Detroit, different story. But this kind of continues, moves into southern Ontario. You guys could get a quick thumping of snow. Like I said, the system really broadens out, extends a little bit further north into Canada also. And then you'll get some wraparound um, kind of snow squalls coming off the lakes, kind of enhance off the lakes, some lake effect snow basically into the UP of Michigan tomorrow evening. And this will drift down the lower Michigan too. And then here comes our next system that we will discuss at the end of the video. So snowfall between now and Thursday morning, there's the stripe of snow. And this is going to move into this region here in the next hour or two. And several inches of snow is possible, you know, five to seven inches of snow. And, you know, Minneapolis could get two to four inches of snow. And then we start to move into the, and, and guys, I'm going to show you some really cool graphics here in a second. Yes, I'm going to show you those awesome graphics that show town names and cities. But you look at snowfall from this, um, from the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes region. And, I mean, a, a few inches of snow is possible in the heart of Wisconsin. UP of Michigan, mainly the central and eastern UP of Michigan, could see a few to several inches of snow. But look at lower Michigan. You guys could see anywhere from three to as much as six, seven inches of snow, depending on your location in this region. So let's go on and show you some graphics. This system is starting to move into this area right now. So, you know, there's areas like in Brookings. Um, what is that? I think that's Brookings, South Dakota, four to eight inches of snow. And there's some five to nine areas, Madison, three to six. Sioux Falls, you know, one to two. Like I said, the, Sioux, the kind of the Sioux Falls region is kind of on the southern edge of the heaviest snow with this. But that could change. This could tweak a little bit. Getting into Minnesota, Marshall, four to seven, Canby, uh, Canby, I think it's Canby, uh, four to seven inches of snow. So there's that. We head into the Twin Cities region, Minneapolis, um, two to four inches of snow. I mean, I guess we'll take it if you're a winter weather fan that's suffering from lack of snow up here because it's been pretty pathetic. Um, St. Cloud, though, you know, just a trace to two inches of snow. So a stripe of light snowfall as possible in this area, Eau Claire, um, two to four inches of snow, Hutchinson, two to four. So Rochester, maybe one to three. All right. Continue to move east. And uh, their graphic has one to five in Minneapolis. So a little bit more wider of a range. You clear one to five inches of snow, Medford, one to five. So, you know, there's a lot more question marks in this area. Across zero to four could get nothing, could get four inches of snow. So, you know, it really tells you any kind of tweaks with this track changes things significantly from north to south. 
was that? I think that's pronounced Woosaw, hopefully, two to six inches of snow. National Weather Service out of Green Bay, three to four inches of snow in Green Bay. Um, you know, Mountain, four to six inches of snow. Pretty generic name. That's cool, though. Uh, Appleton, three inches of snow. All right, so hopefully your area is on this map. And then we head on down to Milwaukee, and this is where it gets tricky. Milwaukee, from nothing, could get an inch. Um, get up to Madison, a trace to three inches. Beaver Dam, two to four. Wupon, Wupon, three to five inches of snow. Um, so, yeah, guys, it, there's some question marks right into this area. Somebody could overachieve right here in this region where the precipitation begins to get much more intense as this little low pressure begins to deepen and try to throw some more uh, snow. This is an area where it could increase, very well could increase. Um, and I'll kind of give you some revised information on this, hopefully tonight if I can get a video out. But one to four inches of snow in Grand Rapids, Alma, two to five, Claire, two to five, Cadillac, two to five, uh, Flint, two to four, Detroit, could get nothing, could get an inch of snow. Uh, so there's a question marks around this region. So out west, System entering the West Coast right now, the form of lower elevation, heavy rain, some gusty winds, higher elevation snow will add up in the Cascades by the time we get into about uh, early to midway this afternoon. We could get some rain and even into San Francisco, the northern half of California. Basically, everybody will either see snow or rain, depending on your elevation. And then this system will continue to move uh, in general eastward kind of have a kind of a northeast component to it and the Sierra, Sierra Nevada will pick up some heavy snow from this we start to get into the overnight hours well this is more so later this evening I always got to back it up three hours out here out west two or three hours but some snows flying around in the Cascades of Oregon and Washington and then the Rockies of, of Idaho and then some snow begins to move into uh, Montana as we are getting into tomorrow morning mainly western and southwestern Montana some heavy snow flying around in eastern Idaho and then western sections of Wyoming and even in the higher elevations of northern Utah and we got more energy that kind of flies in behind it so snowfall from this between now and the next 24 hours 48 hours several inches to a few feet are possible in the Cascades snow will really add up and then we take kind of a look at um idaho right in here there's that snow out, out, adding up i want to say iowing up um but several inches of snow big cut off here in montana uh, but you guys certainly will get several inches of snow depending on your elevation and even in lower elevations you can get some snow off this yellowstone national park widespread eight to maybe as high as 16 to 20 inches of snow depending on elevation but you know the valley regions of uh, idaho you guys certainly will just see probably nothing uh, just uh, not a cold enough storm for you guys to get snow in the lower elevation. So uh, we'll just take a broad look at the Rockies, though, what it looks like. Um, and this is what it's looking like, mainly a central to northern Rockies snow event. Southern Rockies, not going to get much from this, but a little bit of snow in the higher elevations of uh, northern Idaho. I'm sorry, northern Colorado and then uh, the southern sections of uh, Wyoming. So temperatures today uh, warming up. You're kind of locked in below freezing today you know not going to get a whole lot of snow melts um a lot of it melted after the system pulled out yesterday but a lot the rest of it's going to have some struggle uh, kind of going to have a little bit of a struggle um melting today in the northeast some chillier conditions highs locked below freezing as you guys are pretty much robbing all the cold air from everybody else it looks like the northeast is going to remain quite chilly for an extended period of time but you're already warming up in the central U.S. You know, I know a lot of people are like, Mitch, what happened to this cool down? Well, I've kind of mentioned it on and off throughout the last few videos. The pattern failed us, guys. The extended outlook failed us. And uh, to really kind of sum it up, I don't really see any big time shots of cold air. That could change, though. We could turn around and trend favorably to more of a colder outlook. But for now, we got enough to talk about right out in front of us to not really focus too much on the long range for now. So, you know, the central portion of the country, you know, Dallas could hit 70 degrees today. There's going to be areas that got like 14 inches of snow um, and Texas is going to hit almost 70 degrees today. So pretty wild. That's just typical fam February to March type stuff. You know, a chillier day in the southeast, but not as cold as it was yesterday. And then temperatures out west. Um, you know, you're, you're cooling back down in the northern plains and northern Rockies, but you start to get further southwest in the western U.S. and you're starting to get above average for sure. 
All right, so let's talk about this first system. It's the same extension for that system that we just broke down for the upper Midwest Great Lakes region. As we are getting into our Thursday afternoon, tomorrow, we start to get some snow that's going to move into Buffalo, the western sections of New York State. I think for the most part, this will miss Pennsylvania. The, basically, not enough cold air in Pennsylvania, one, and then two, not enough precipitation. You're going to get precipitation in a form of rain in Pennsylvania, uh, but you really got to get into these northern counties where you get cold enough. So you're going to start off with some probably some heavy snow sometime tomorrow in Buffalo. Could switch to rain. And this system could catch people by surprise. You know, it's not being talked about a whole lot, but this is a quick heating system that moves in tomorrow after lunchtime. Bring some very heavy snow even the northern sections of Pennsylvania, but into the Finger Lakes region, the southern tier of New York, the snow moves into the Tug Hill Plateau, the Adirondacks, the Catskills, even some snow getting into the Poconos. A lot of these areas that kind of got whiffed with this snow event before, and even some of the areas that didn't, will get more snow on top of, of on top of snow. You know, and this says it's cold. The HRPR model says this is cold enough for snow all the way down to Long Island, even a little bit in New York City. But look, this snow could be heavy. I don't think this is going to be a big event, but it could be pretty heavy um, when it is snowing. This looks like a wall of snow heading towards Boston as we get into late tomorrow evening. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take it all the way out to, you know, 8 to 9 p.m. on the HRPR model, guys. And um, this is some pretty heavy snow moving through New England. The Adirondacks, the Green and White Mountains of Vermont, New Hampshire, you know, the Berkshires, still snowing in the Catskills, snowing in all of southern New England, snow on top of snow. In areas like Boston, it didn't even whiff an inch of snow from this last event. Could get a few inches of snow. And I can hear people now, well, I believe it when I see it. And I don't blame you. I don't believe blame you one bit for having that mentality about this. But we'll see what this does. I really think this has a chance to drop several inches of snow in, in certain areas. And then this moves in. You know, it kind of moves in, lasts a few hours. And we only can go out 48 hours on the HRRR model. But one thing I'm watching is sort of some snow squall type conditions kind of whipping around out of southern Ontario across the Great Lakes. These could be uh, lake effect enhanced in this region and could have some kind of whipping around uh, lake effect snow bands that could extend all the way into like the Finger Lakes region. And this system will last a much longer time in the northern sections of of New England. Like up here, snow's going to last a much longer time. And we'll go on and look kind of the European model and look at the extension of this right in here. That's not what I want to look at right here. And, you know, this is still ongoing as we're getting into Friday morning. A little bit of moderate snow flying around even into southern sections of Maine that did not really get anything from this last event. And, I mean, even kind of in between this system and the next system that's about to enter your screen, there could just be a lot of snow showers and snow flurries. So we need to watch this system, you know, check it out. I mean, between now and Friday evening, okay, several inches of snow expected in the Tuck Hill Plateau. We will zoom into some of them's really those really cool graphics that I just showed for the Midwest here in, here in the next video. But anywhere from a few to several inches of snow, not going for much in Buffalo, I almost called Boston Buffalo, not going for much in Buffalo or Boston right now, but this could change, this could tweak a little bit. Um, but you get north. And you get out here in this region, the higher terrain, you know, a several inch snowfall event is likely. And this is going to fall pretty fast and furious, too. We'll have to see if this gets these some of these toes get tweaked south. But we do have a couple inches of snow forecast for southern New England that we'll watch out for. The next system that we'll watch, we'll compare the GFS and the Euro. As you can tell, this system's heading on off, the one we just spoke on. Cold air is oozing down. We've been talking about this for what it feels like a month. Okay, got some moisture bubbling up from the Gulf. Are they going to connect? I don't think so. But enough northern stream energy with this cold air press coming down. And this is what it looks like Friday morning. And all of a sudden we get into our uh, kind of Friday midday. We got a little bit of snow in the Rockies. And we'll go on and switch to the eastern U.S. frame here. Here it comes. A stripe of snow. Midday Friday. Off the GFS. Not quite a forecast, which is pretty pathetic considering we're like 48 to 60 hours out. But there's still some changes here, but the, the, the models are really starting to converge now. So that's the good news. But the GFS brings a stripe of moderate to heavy snow right through St. Louis, southern Missouri. Rain. Rain starting off in Kentucky, but there's cold air moving in. All right. And you kind of keep this going. System's starting to get a little bit suppressed. Yes, it misses Chicago and northern Illinois, northern. Um, but it could, it could tweak north. Well, we get it all the way to Friday evening. You got any outdoor activities? Could have snow flying around. You know, Cincinnati, Louisville, Lexington, 
The GFS says, hey, you got a band of snow moving in. It could have more of a wintry mix in these splotches of orange and pink, but you know, we'll see what happens with that. But there's an axis of snow right here in this region, sort of the southern sections of the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. And then we start to get into late Friday evening, and look at this snow. And I don't know, you know, the pink is symbolizing freezing rain. I don't know about that, but we'll watch. Um, you know, for the most part, looking like mainly rain in Tennessee. That could change. If this cold air uh, push trends further south, this is going to suppress this moisture further south, bring a little bit more snow further south. So I would watch out deeper into Virginia, deeper into uh, to Tennessee with this. There could be some changes. But, you know, we get into the middle of the night, guys. I mean, Friday night, this is trending into uh, into this is trending into a more impressive event right here in front of us. We're not talking about next Friday, next Saturday. We're talking about a couple days in front of us. This is bringing some moderate to heavy snow into West Virginia. It's still snowing back here in Kentucky. Uh, look at D.C., Baltimore getting snow. How far north will this get up to New York City? Snowing in southern PA. Continues. We're getting into the wee hours of the morning, Saturday morning, like 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Band of heavy snow, not just moving through D.C. and Baltimore, but points south also into the Delmarva. Snowing back here in western Virginia, still snowing in eastern Kentucky. And then we're starting to get into Saturday morning, still snowing like crazy in the Delmarva. How far north will this snow get into New York City? Maybe even southern New England. And then this heads on off. And then we got to watch this sneaky system behind this, too. It's trying to be sneaky, and uh, it won't stop. This is not a forecast, guys, but we gotta watch this low. It's sort of cold air steering near still nearby. It wants to try to flirt with a wintery mix somewhere in the Carolina coastline. We'll have to watch that. that you know, this is something that I've been keeping my own for quite some time now. Europeans, same kind of deal, cold air push. And uh, you know, not a whole lot expected from this, I don't think, in the middle of the country. But with such cold air, we could get a few inches of snow in the middle of the country. We'll speak more on that um here in due time. And then we're going to switch it to the eastern U.S. and we're probably going to go to the 06Z Euro, which is cool because it's in range. So we can look at this. This is the latest information. And check it out. Midday Friday, it's snowing in central Missouri. Snow starting to move into St. Louis. You know, this kind of shade of blue right here would symbolize some moderate snow. This continues. It's not as juiced up as the GFS model. Not showing as heavy snow. But it is starting to bring some snow into Kentucky, southern sections of um, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio as we're getting into Friday night. We'll kind of speed this up here. And then we're getting into the wee hours of the morning Saturday. And this low tries to get a little bit stronger. Therefore, heavier precipitation. Northern Virginia seeing snow. West Virginia seeing snow. We take it all the way into Saturday morning. And this is probably when it's going to be the most juiced up, meaning the heaviest precipitation. It's a little bit warmer compared to the GFS. But this brings some moderate snow across the D.C. area, mid-Atlantic region. And then by the time we are getting into a Friday afternoon, we'll have to see if this tries to strengthen. Throw a little bit more precipitation a little bit further north. We, can look, we look at the snow signal from this. This is the first one, right? We already talked about that. Here comes the next one. Remember, this is the European Ensemble. This is a 24-hour period. So this is going to show snow in that 24-hour kind of increment kind of period here. So this is a snowfall mean, not a forecast. This combines a bunch of members together and creates a mean, an average in this one 24-hour period. So, you know, it wants to throw a two-inch snowfall mean on top of St. Louis. And then you got a one to two inch snowfall mean across areas of the Ohio Valley, northern Kentucky, northern southern Ohio, southern Indiana. And then it gets a little bit more juiced up once it gets into the mid Atlantic. And this is the European ensemble. It's a little bit further north. And you got a one to anywhere from a two and a half, three inch snowfall mean across this area right in here. And then it heads on off. But there is a signal for snow up here into New York City and southern New England, too. So we need to watch the trends with this. GFS ensemble, same kind of deal. I mean, the GFS, GFS Ensemble and the European Ensemble is locked into St. Louis getting a stripe of accumulating snow from this. Brings that stripe of accumulating snow through these regions right in here, and then it gets a little bit more juiced up in the mid-Atlantic right in here as we get into Friday night and a Saturday morning. So we'll continue to watch this, guys. It's an interesting event that's getting a little bit more impressive the closer we get to it, and it's right out in front of us. So that's all I got, guys. God bless all y'all. Have a great Wednesday, and uh, yeah. Talk to you later.